Hello everybody, this is episode 63 of the Chesterfield of Dreams and today we're going to have our 11th game of the season away to West Bromwich Albion and things have gone slightly better for the Spyrites since we last met but of course there's always a downside to uh, good results but uh, let's just focus on, focus on the positives for the time being we are in 14th position with 13 points and uh, we have a slight cushion over the bottom three but our game in hand is a Monday night affair against the Baggies and as you can see we're only one point behind them and because uh, they're ninth it's going to be a massive leap up the table for whoever wins this game uh, Everton are starting to slip back a little bit ever since we uh, beat them we can take a look at that uh, information for you now uh, so the last time uh, I was here it was of course our first win of the season away to Sunderland and uh, that was a fabulous turnaround to say the least but Fulham uh, were too dominant for us uh, at Craven Cottage after Tom Bertram gave us the lead we just didn't uh, respond to that uh, good fortune and they had a brilliant second half when they scored three goals without reply but then we uh, got a perfect re uh, 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 reflection of that result as El Capitan Grande, or Mesa Grande as I like to call him, got uh, another hat-trick at the uh, Proax Stadium. He's really starting to turn on the style and uh, it looked like Mario Balotelli had gotten Liverpool back into this game with the trademark penalty. But the captain, uh, absolutely supreme captain, got uh, straight up the other end and scored his hat-trick so he got that match ball and those three valuable points. Um, disappointment in an ill-tempered game against Leicester City. Two red cards and a missed penalty for the Foxes uh, kept our unbeaten home record intact but it was definitely something uh, we really need to think about because uh, we didn't play well at all. Leicester did dominate for p patches and there was just no excuse really. We were lucky to draw but we'll move on from that very soon. But maybe because we played five at the back at home, we weren't uh, uh, creative enough. We didn't want to win the game. We we're too uh, focused on defending. However, we got ourselves back in, uh, in good spirits uh, with that five at the back formation away to Everton. The first time they've lost at home and our first uh, genuine away win of the season. And it came after another foul-tempered game because four players... Um, managed to get hurt uh, two of their guys uh, actually had to be substituted and um, uh, Yair Mesa and Ben Wagstaff also received minor injuries but Wagstaff got the worst of it uh, Humam Tariq uh, their captain was also hurt so uh, despite a few yellow cards it definitely wasn't a pleasant affair but as the game wore on I made two vital changes Henrik Goulden and uh, Mohamed Ahmed and both players made massive contributions as Kintzla once again scored against the Toffees and then the Iraqi made his uh, first uh, you know, appearance for the club count with a brilliant second uh, goal for the team so that leaves us with another away game against West Brom but our squad continues to uh, be stuck uh, with several injuries such as um, Linus Muller was uh, injured um, and he's only coming back Marcel Phillips injured out on loan uh, Ben Bolet is coming back but the worst positions affected have been the wingers because Gore and Bertram both have long term injuries three months to be exact Gore has already served one of those months for the turn calf muscle Ben Wagstaff is recovering from injury. Callum Cook is uh, almost back from injury. But it's just absolutely desperate stuff. And that's what uh, that's why I've gone for a uh, rather um, expansive formation, to say the least. I'm actually playing an attacking midfielder for once. And it's going to be a bit of a gamble uh, to you know push up and try and attack West Brom. But uh, I just feel... Without our wingers, we have to do something different and maybe have an experiment, see how we get on. But I don't mind whatever happens, but it would be great to get another few points uh, into the kitty and get another run to survival underway. But this is the team I'm playing. Sam Zand is the man who stands out because he's not an attacking midfielder. But then again, I don't have many uh, available. I don't want to risk too many strikers. And uh, I just felt he deserves a shot in the first team. Ronnie Pino will be our deep-lying playmaker. Brian Boring has been absolutely stupendous 
in these last few weeks. Look at this for a form guide. 7.7, 7.4, 7.9, 7.2, 8.2. .2. And in that time, he's only assisted two goals. So that just goes to show what a difference he's making to the club. And um, it's great to have Stephenson back. Um, Shanahan's in great form. Jakob Rinna saved the penalty, of course. And uh, Mohamed Ahmed scored his first goal. And uh, Mesa just needs to pick himself up. He's been a little inconsistent this season. Two games without that hat-trick now, but hopefully with a strike partner, he can get back among the goals. So uh, that's enough. Uh, build up the game. Let's head directly to the team talk. Okay, welcome to the match screen. As you can see, West Brom have uh, even odds to win this game. We're 11 to 5 shots, uh, especially due to the injuries we've been picking up. But uh, in the line lineups, I think it's worth taking a little bit of a gamble as they're going for the standard 4-4-2 and uh, we'll try and dominate the midfield. But uh, we're going to be exposed on the flanks as a result. Just uh, Kevin and Shanahan will be providing that defensive cover. But I'm very excited to see what Ahmed can do when he's with a uh, strike partner. And um, we can now take a team talk really quickly. Uh, we need to... Um, impressed tonight no question about it there's um, another long week ahead of training and it will be uh, disappointing if we don't get a result but it's um, uh, a good long-term project if we try something different and see how we get on but it's gonna be tough for the guys to uh, just get instant results but however we'll uh, listen to the crowd sounds and uh, get this game underway we'll try and be a little more expressive but we have to stick to positions that's what uh, is necessary in my opinion and we're ready for kickoff and Woolley who was signed from Arsenal he scored against us last season he's uh, at left back today um, and it's an early chance for West Brom from a throw in not good enough Berahino good tackle by you guessed it Brian Boring and now he sets up the play for Stephenson returned Zand to Jairo Mesa Sam Zand and now Boring roaming forward here he is again can he return the ball he can and Kim Sung Gyun has kept it out right near his far post there. Really had to get down for it. Here's Ronnie Pino. Goal oh, tackled. And Berahino has somehow been found. And Stephenson with the tackle. Oh, we had to get back there. I don't know how that happened. And Zand is able to clear. Couple. Oh, that was very brave. Here's Stambouli and Gabbiadini. He was injured against us last season. So he didn't get to contribute too much. Um... Six, an exciting game, two chances each, but we're not doing too well in possession. That's an open goal. That's Craig Dawson. And that's an easy goal, to be honest. Just a set piece. Worked very nicely. And we're going to have to respond to that. Um, we're doing well in possession. We might go a little more direct. But it's been a poor reaction to that goal. Nothing has happened. We're waiting for something to happen. We're going to... Uh, control and just say concentrate because uh, don't go 2-0 down before half time that would be really bad um, but the atmosphere is not what I expected here's a free kick oh just over the over the side netting there but West Brom have dominated since they scored that's a terrible pass and Berahino maybe definitely should have scored and they're trying again from the bullet throws Berahino from outside the box. Good tackle, Brian Boring. And here's Saira getting forward. And Yair Mesa. Uh, Mesa Grande getting tackled quite easily. And this is a very poor first half. Not good enough. So we'll go back to uh, standard and then go back to discipline. But uh, the strikers have not linked up today. I know it's only their first uh, time together properly. But still a little disappointing. Um... I, I would have loved to see a bit better but we'll try and try again there's no use uh, giving up now we saw what happened against Sunderland a good strategy can make a massive difference but the players need to believe in it and I'm not ready to make a change just yet we haven't had a shot on goal for half an hour I think and that's really disappointing here's Koppel now he's got Sissoko available he's using him and Pino is left for dead Stambouli and Ksafit Good tackle by Brian Boring. Mesa, he is isolated on that left wing. Because we don't have any wingers, we might actually go exploit the middle. I don't know why I didn't do that earlier. My, my fault. Um, 
Chesterfield starting to get something on the board. Mess up playing badly. Um, can he inspire someone to get forward? Um, go back to control maybe. Um, booze ringing around the Hawthorns. Not much is going on. And we're going to make our first substitution of the game. And I'm going to choose um, Sam Zand. He's tried his best. But we'll play Loftus Sheik in that role now. Um, and we'll leave the strikers alone. Uh, we can make a change for them either. But it would be really sad if neither made a difference. I might make Ahmed a... I don't know. What can we do with him? Uh, Trek Artista. Yeah, we might do that. See what happens. But Loftus Cheek gets to be an attacking mid today. Um, let's see if he can get a, a goal and an assist. Now it's a throw in yet again for West Brom. It's a Soko hits the post from close range. And here he is again wide. We're not able to man mark him in the air. Here's Sean Kavanagh. Mm, not great. Uh, crossing isn't working. Pino, Yairo Mesa. Here's Loftus Cheek. Ahmed, Stephenson and Boring are nice and tight. And here's Loftus Cheek. Good stop by Gueux. And we try again from a set piece, and it's Dawson getting back. Now we're going to bring on another striker. And it's. Um, I'm going to bring on Henning for Mesa. Big gamble. Henning doesn't score often, but we'll make him a false nine. And Ahmed can be the uh, advanced forward see how we can do then um, but we need to get a goal it's only 1-0 but we are getting a little bit of dissension here can we catch them out Stambouli he's hurt and on a yellow card not a good combination here's Loftus-Cheek oh what a goal Ruben Loftus-Cheek nearly blew the net in half brilliant shot absolutely brilliant shot and Kavanagh nearly scored but Loftus Cheek, substitution supreme, and we have a game on here. Oh, cleared. Oh, Shanahan. Oh, he made me nervous. Uh, we're going to bring on a last change. Um, who could it be? Um, right, I think Kinsella. Why the hell not? Let's bring him in. And Loftus Cheek can swap positions so Kinsla in good form gets his chance bad luck for Tomas Forza he'll probably play the next game um, but West Brom are looking to win Gabby Adini. oh my goodness gracious what a shot and it's nearly kept in by Berahino Henning good save oh how close can you get here Stephenson to Pino Kinsla Oh my goodness! It's unbelievable! Two substitutes, two goals! And Chesterfield are seventh in the Premier League after 11 games! Majestic stuff! And I'm not going to take too much credit for that, we have to tighten up! Oops, no wrong button, Jesus! Tighten up, tighten up, tighten up! There you go! We've seen two absolute belters. Ahmed is forward and heading. What a phase of play. It's Michael Henning out of nowhere. Ahmed the assistant and West Brom are shell-shocked. Absolute scenes. Chesterfield out of nowhere have produced a performance to die for. We've seen some of the best goals in the series in one episode and we are taking three points back to Chesterfield my word I haven't been as excited as that in a long time but I'm gonna take a look back at that Loftus Cheek goal what a lad my goodness all three substitutes have made a huge impact my god all three substitutes <laughs> I don't believe that. That is inspired. And that's going down in history in this series. And we are on 16 points. 4 wins, 4 draws. Plus 1 goal difference. Make note of that. Plus 1 goal difference. That is something we rarely ever achieve. And 
this looks very promising all of a sudden my my uh, breath is taken away here Stephenson makes his 25th appearance Loftus Cheek his first career league goal for the Spirites and now after a really difficult start we can look up the table for definite now it's not uh, over bar the shouting by any means we're only six points clear of the drop but look where Everton are they've lost two in a row and Chelsea are not too far ahead either but it is a breakaway league between the Manchester clubs however I've really really enjoyed this episode and if you guys have as well that's an even better bonus but until the next episode which will probably be the Christmas phase against uh, Huddersfield I'd like to play them actually uh, that'll be a great game and then we can look at Southampton and Manchester City in the new year. That's really difficult though. 30th December, 1st of January. That is madness. But apart from that, thank you for watching. And we'll see you again soon. Goodbye.